you know, if you'd asked me 10 years ago where I'd be at today, I, I can guarantee you my answer would be completely different. I never expected to be where I'm at. And I sure as hell never expected the, the trip that it's been. You know, my whole life I've, I've strongly believed everything happens for a reason. You know, all the bumps, all the highs, all the lows, you know, even the tragic events, you know, they're all for some greater purpose. My senior year in high school, I was sitting in a U.S. history class, and the principal came on the loudspeaker, and he, he informed us that the first Twin Tower had been hit by an airplane and was falling, and we watched the second fall. You know, and in that moment, I quickly realized that my life was gonna change. I knew what I had to do, and that was join the military. I had to go fight. I had to be a part of it, because in those defining moments, the moment can define us, and we can define that moment. And if you fast forward nine months, you know, I, I quickly got to the rank of staff sergeant and got involved in the snipers and reconnaissance and deployed, you know, 39 months, about three years uh, to Iraq. And then one day, everything came to a stop. Um, I was called back to Fort Bragg, North Carolina to stand in front of a medical review board. I didn't know what to think, because you know, up until this point, the injuries that I sustained many years ago, I had been able to kind of hide from them for, for so long. I thought it was going to be another day where people questioned me on it and then, you know, I lie my way out of it and, and continue on. But it didn't quite work out that way this day. Initially, it was, it was a sense of relief. I didn't shave my face. I didn't wake up and go do PT. I didn't have to report to anybody. And the next day I woke up and I did not know what to do. All direction and purpose in my life was gone. I thought that I was invincible for so long. Now I realized that I was nobody because you quickly realize that you aren't anybody without the individuals that you are serving with. Those are the ones that make you strong. Those are the ones that keep you going. Those are the ones that solidify your existence. I was just kind of, kind of lost. I didn't know what to do. But then I met Ed Nicholson. <laughs> Time does fly, but it's been nine years, maybe going on ten, that uh, met Wes. He'd gotten out of the service. I first met Ed at a uh, Project Healing Waters event at the Rose we got River. got together down here at Rose River Farm. We first met and then hit it off. I was there to help volunteer um, as a guide for the program. Uh, however, upon meeting Ed, he realized that I was actually a veteran. So we kind of joked and, and laughed about that. and in the sense that I was supposed to be receiving uh, the service, not so much giving uh, service back. We, we hit it off, we had a good time. It's just one of the, the, the great heartening things and fulfilling things of uh, my involvement with Project Healing Waters, the ability to meet so many interesting and great people and uh, forge those friendships. Ed Nicholson is without question one of the most amazing men I've ever met in my life. He's a 30-year veteran of the Navy, a retired captain, uh, and then he started the Project Healing Waters fly fishing program, uh, which serves America's disabled veterans 
uh, through therapeutic healing, through fly fishing. It seems like Ed sees the best in every person. And he, and he treats them that way. Like they have something to offer and he wants to, he wants to identify what that is. And it's something that I, I strive to do myself is, is to make people better. Ed is more than a role model or a mentor for me. Ed is one of my greatest friends. Yeah. Um, age doesn't matter. Yeah, that's a good point. And I, I think uh, perhaps people make more of that than they should. I mean, as you get older, you're still a kid at heart. I mean, your body might be leaving you, but, you know, you're, you're still thinking like you did when you were younger. And uh, I think associating with people like Wes, the younger guys and ladies, it keeps you younger yourself. Plenty of time to uh, uh, play shuffleboard down in down in Palm Beach. Ed made a remarkable comment to me one time years ago saying that the path of life is, is, is rather simple and that is that you, you learn, then you earn, and then you return. And it's something that's kind of stuck with me. I do feel that there are certain times in certain places, and certain people that we are supposed to interact with, that we're supposed to connect with. And Ed Nicholson happens to be one of those people, and this happens to be one of those places that I'm supposed to be at right now. 